And now for our final piece, I've saved the most difficult, most advanced one for last. This one is going to be a lot of fun. Some of you may hate me after this. But if you take the time to learn to do this technique, it's really a lot of fun. You can use it for a lot of things other than this. We're going to make a pair of binoculars. Uh, no dinosaur hunter would be caught dead without in the field without his binoculars. So you can see the dinosaur that was without having to get it too close. Uh, you can see we've got some interesting balloons here. We've got a 160 and I've chosen gray. I've got about an inch and a half nozzle left uninflated on it. I've taken two 360s. You can use 350s or 360s for this. And maybe it helps with that's behind you can see. I've blown these up all the way to the end and then tied them off so that I have just a bubble from the end about eight inches long from each of these. And they need to be fairly tight so they'll stay nice and clear. So two 360 end pieces. I'm going to set those aside for the moment. I'm going to keep one out. And then I've got two 660s. Again, you can also use a 646 if you like. These happen to be 660s. These are gray. And I've blown these up about eight or nine inches. They need to be slightly longer than your clears. Now is where the real fun begins. Now we're going to take one of our 660s and one of our 360s and we're going to put the 360 inside the 660. We're going to start with the 660 by making a little small bubble on the end of it. And then we're going to take that and make it a jumbo tulip twist, more or less, or the beginning of a tulip twist by pushing it back, that bubble back up inside there. Now I'm having to work this out on the table out at arm's length. It makes it much more challenging. It's much easier, much easier when you're doing this if you can hold it against your body to stabilize it. But if I do that, you can't see it. So bear with me. Now we're going to take, once I've got that bubble secured in there, we're going to take our 360 and we're going to push it up inside the 660, pushing that bubble further up in there. This is where it really is going to get fun. Because I have to hang on to the back half and push and work it up in there. with me. And once you've got it pushed all the way up in there, now we're going to take and cut a little hole in this other end, like the 660, or possibly pop it. There we go. And now our 360 is up inside there. And this is why we had that bubble on the end. This one, sometimes when it pops, It'll just, if you can get this hole to clip, it'll be, and you just roll that second layer back off so that you only have a single layer. This one popped and it pulled all back, so I didn't have to do that. I'm gonna take the end here, and I'm gonna trim that a little bit. And as I was saying, this is why you had that bubble on the end in there, and this is why mine got tight, because it pushed further in than I wanted. But this gives me something to grab. If I just pushed it in on the end of the balloon, it would be like that, and there would be nothing to grab. So now I can grab this and pull it away just a little bit from my 360. And once you've got the two ends trimmed off, now you're just going to take, not too far, and you're going to roll this back on either side just a little bit so that your 360 is now protruding out from the end. And as you can see looking through there, you can't see real good from there, you've got the beginning of the binoculars lens. I need to roll this back out to the end. Now I'm going to go make a second one because you don't need to see that twice, and I'll be right back. Okay, and now we're back and we've got the two tubes for our binoculars completed, as you can see. You can see nicely through both of those. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our 160, and we're gonna start by making a little small bubble in the end, making that a pinch twist, make another little small bubble in the end, make that a pinch twist as well. Now we're gonna take one of our halves of our binoculars, and I'm going to start by taking that, and you'll see how this is kind of pushing and making an indention there. I'm going to lay this around in that little indention and just wrap the 160 all the way around until I come back to the two pinch twists and then twist it around those two pinch twists to secure it in place. Now I'm going to take my other half of my binoculars, and since I've got the, you can, there you can see it a little bit there, the knot is right there, the nozzle end. I want the nozzle in here as well. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to wrap it around this one. 
completely around it. Oops. Again, coming back to the pinch twist and twisting it into those two pinch twists there, thus holding it in place. There we go, there's the beginning of that. Now I'm going to lay it alongside one of them until I get to where the gray ends on this. And I'm going to repeat that process. I'm going to twist the bubble to match that length and I'm going to make two small little pinch twists. Just like I did before. I want to make sure it lays kind of straight and you're going to wrap it around your first half. And then back in around those two pinch twists. Okay, now we've got that first one wrapped around and you've secured that in those two pinch twists. Now we're going to take and we're going to go around our second one here. And we're coming to the end of the balloon, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it around and I'm going to measure about where it's going to cross. And again, you want to make sure it's tight. And then I'm going to take and pop a hole in the end of this little piece here so I can tie that off just like that. I'm going to burp it just a tiny bit. Tie that and I'm going to grab my other part of my binoculars back up here and we're going to wrap that all the way around again securing that into those two pinch twists there. This can be a bit of a stick sometimes but oops, my binoculars just popped out. Once you've got that secure there, we're going to push this back over it. We're going to take our two pinch twists and position them just like we did our first ones where they're on the opposite sides there. And there. Now you have a pair of binoculars that not only look cool, but you can actually see through them.